I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. It's a pleasure to welcome Eric Anderson. Uh, it's the first time I've had Eric here at WABC on Stage 17. I spoke to him by phone before for his wonderful and thrilling Osiris with a great payoff. This time, the new novel is Byte, B-Y-T-E. Of course, that's a digital term. Eric, congratulations and good evening. Thank you, John. And we're dealing with a work of fiction, so we're giving nothing away. But we are going to talk about the frame of the book, which is the digital universe. Uh, over these last years, we've had a rough education uh, that little about the digital universe is either secret or trustworthy. Uh, as you approach this, and you dealt with geopolitics, Russia, the United States, and bad actors in between, and then blockchain, which is in the news all the time. It's in the news today. The banks are starting to use blockchain. How do you see the general question, because your characters have to deal with this, that uh, there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide, uh, that the advantage goes to the attacker? Good evening to you. Good evening. The advantage goes to the attacker so long as a defender is, is willing to sit by and be a victim. Right. And that happens in the digital world through a lack of security, lack of password control, uh, and in some cases, lack of to establish a firewall to protect yourself from what, what can happen. What I use to the technology for in the, the way that Byte is framed is to provide the reader a view of how you can manipulate the blockchain, the consequences for Bitcoin, and then the ramifications for the people who use Bitcoin to hide their wealth. Uh, and in this case, we're going after manipulating the Russian election as opposed to being manipulated by the Russians. Yes, the Russian election, the Russian oligarchs, the Russian dictator, Vladimir Putin, the next dictator, maybe. But let's start with some definitions here, because you're, you're in the world of nonfiction, writing a book, uh, writing a work of fiction about it. What is blockchain? Why is, why is it that J.P. Morgan today, uh, within these last days, is indicating that they're going more and more to using blockchain for problems between banks, for transfer of cash. I think they're now talking about 14,500 events a day on blockchain between international banks. How does it work, Eric? So what blockchain does is it sets up a sequence of users. Uh, no one individual holds all the data in a, in a single place, but rather there are multiple storage sites. You can create security with blockchain by adding more sites, and it becomes almost impossible to, to break into it. Um, the, the failure I found within blockchain was that if you shut down half of the users that are, are responsible for monitoring a particular transaction process, you can then manipulate the actual values that are sitting within. That's the, 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 the risk to using blockchain, but also the benefit, because now we have, we know millions of Chinese working on mining Bitcoin and, and using blockchain to, to monitor their transactions. And so you've got this underlying system that the banks are finding very appealing because you no longer are dependent on a single server. Right. Blockchain is trustworthy to a point. It's anonymous to a point, if I understand it correctly. It can be solved. It, it can be solved. It's very difficult to accomplish. What it really does is it provides you with a digital date timestamp for a particular Bitcoin or a transaction within Bitcoin. Or any cryptocurrency. Any cryptocurrency yeah, that right. you want to play with. And the banks have discovered that. And so you, you get to the point where it's almost impossible to hack into it because you're working with intricate problem sets that go into the algorithm to run that transaction uh, monitoring and, and pass it along to multiple other users. And do it anonymously. Do and it do without it. being able to be found backwards. You, you can tra trace back, but it is very difficult. Uh, and so the... This is why the banks kind of like it, and the Russians have adopted it. If you if watch the value of, of Bitcoin, it took off during the Cypriot banking crisis, when the Russians were told that they were going to lose all but 100,000 of any of the eight assets they had stolen in a, a Cypriot bank. It was a, a transactional process that the, the Cypriot government felt this was the only way to make up for the, the financial crisis that they were confronting. So the Russians tried to move as much of their currency out of rubles or dollars and into Bitcoin so that they could move it off the island without being traced. Uh, and that, so for a while it was a seller's market, and now we're back to buyer's market or bear market. It, it's, uh, it, right now, I, thought, I think I thought the last value was at $6,800 yeah. for Bitcoin. It, it reached 35000 at one point. 
Uh, that was speculation right. taking place. Uh, I, I just, saw the print number around 19,000, so it's down about 67, 66%, yes. a, ba- a bear market. All right, now, you're writing a work of fiction, however, so the geopolitics of this. Russia is a bad actor. We're in a new Cold War. Vladimir Putin is three times elected president. Eventually, he will age out. And what sustains him are the oligarchs and their money. Your protagonists and antagonists and you'd have to say foils, uh, are tasked with challenging this for profit, for profit. Yes. For profit. It's always for profit. What drives this is profit. But there is a Russian participation here that you'd have to say is Jeffersonian naive at, that's, at the same time. Uh, your opinion of your characters, do they feel risk wandering into this, uh, uh, this dark, dark net where they, where they have to live. Do they feel risk in the United States or overseas from the authorities who are watching them? There, there's no physical risk associated, at least that we can prove. Nobody's being assassinated because they went shopping on the dark web. Uh, there, are, there is a fairly secure means of working in the, in the dark web, and that's used the under, onion router that the State Department had developed for the Iranian Revolution when the Green Revolution was taking place in Tehran. Uh, that has become a common medium for people to go in under the dark way and climb about. The the real fear is the for in my case the protagonist, uh, one being found out that she's chasing down this path and trying to catch yeah, this. One protagonist is chasing another protagonist. He's watching another protagonist. And, yes. and you 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 see the art of this game that they play because they start tracing code. Um, and this is how these guys go after each other. Is it's a, an ability to figure out who wrote the code, and how did it get loaded up into the, the machines, or who went after the, the actual hack? And the vanity of the code writers, because like bomb builders, they have signatures. Yes, they they want people to know they're doing it. Right, um, right. The one the one place that you don't find that, by the way, is with China. I and mean, the Chinese hackers work in a very different mode than what we're used to in the United States. Uh, they write chunks of code and then they'll sell it on the dark web. So you can p- compile your own code if you so desire and go after people that way. So like Mr. Potato Head, you can take pieces of everything and yes. make a new character. Fine. Uh, it's a geopolitical contest. And uh, during the course of the book, I, it became clear to me that there is no security for, for the, the nation states right now. Their sovereignty is broken. And they're not going to get it back. They, they bra- uh, what happens is you turn into select groups, subsets of, uh, that have nation states as sponsors. There are a series of subsets in Russia. There are a series of subsets in Europe, certainly in China. We, we can't penetrate it, but we can guess the same thing. Is that going on here? Do we have subsets that are protecting themselves digitally quite separate from the USA? Yes, uh, and the major corporations are the first place that you start. Amazon spends a lot of time on security. Uh, and, and Microsoft obviously has worked out a, a digital dissemination process that co- causes it to have to focus on the security of its pr- software coding. You get it uh, across the line with, with the major corporations, and we certainly see it happening within the, the defense contractors. Uh, sometimes the most vulnerable player, by the way, is the military system because they, they'll work on both the unclassified side and then they run a secret network that's just a, a, an encrypted version of the internet on running on internet protocols and servers that the average human can get into. The book is Byte. It's a novel. Remember now, it's a, it's a work of fiction, but constructing a work of fiction in the digital universe means that you come up against limits and then you can see a little over the horizon. So Eric, you, you've come up against the limits of what we understand right now. We talk blockchain. We talk about uh, the hackers in Shanghai, the hackers that work for the Kremlin in Petersburg. Looking a little over, we have a, a couple of minutes here. Looking a little over, are we early days of digital? Are we moving to more and more security? Or is this a is this an arms race? Whatever we come up with, there's going to be a counter. You, you, you hit it right on the head, John, and that it's an arms race. Arms race. The, the winner gets to turn things off first. Right. It isn't the case any longer, and I tell my friends in the military this, it isn't longer the case of how can you break things it's how many light bulbs you can make go off or what systems you can take offline. Right. And there is a constant poking and probing on that. It's one of the reasons that the National Security Agency maintains close ties to the, to the large software corporations. They help with the problem. Uh, if you'll recall when the Chinese hacked Google in 2007, really, I think 2007, 
Google admitted that they had this relationship. With right, the they NSA. did it was phishing, yeah. straightforward phishing right. to hack so, Google. So you're seeing they hack Gmail, right? You're seeing the same thing happen now. If you're watching the reports on the Russians and the way that they got into our election in 2016, going after Facebook, they were starting up separate organizations, and we know the Chinese have done the same thing. The book is Byte. It has a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> At least it makes you smile. Eric Anderson is the author. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show.